All right, today we're going to be discussing interactive filters, how they can and how they can be used on the platform. First, I'll give a basic overview on dashboards, reports, and interactive filters. Then we'll go into a little more detail on the different types of standard filters that you can create, how to create them, and their limitations. And then we'll do a walkthrough on creating a report and interactive filters in a developer instance. And then I'll show you some standard and custom interactive filters that I've created. Then we can look at some of the code behind them. So dashboards allow you to display multiple performance analytics, reporting, and other widgets on a single screen. Uh, this can give you a representation of what's going on in your organization. Uh, interactive filters allow you to filter report widgets directly from a home page or a dashboard without modifying the actual report. Um, you do need a license for performance analytics to create new interactive filters. So ServiceNow offers seven, seven different types of filters that you can create. The selection is limited, so if there are other field types that you want to use uh, to filter on, then you would need to create your own custom filters. But for the standard ones, you have choice, reference, date, and Boolean field types. You can also create group filters to display multiple interactive filters in a single widget. You can filter based on whether a field contains a value or not. And then you can also create cascading filters that allow you to filter based on multiple values in a hierarchy. The UI control type gives you options for displaying the filter. So you can display them as radio buttons, checkboxes, or single input or multiple input choice lists. If you go to the interactive filter table, you can actually create a new record and select what kind of filter you would like to create. The name field is the name that will appear on the widget on the dashboard. And then you can also use the lookup name to help organize or distinguish similar filters from one another. Uh, then you can select the UI control type. Um, and then you also have some optional checkboxes that determine uh, which tables the filter could potentially apply to, if it's either a database or um, a hierarchy table structure. And then for this example, um, we're doing a choice list. So you'd go and select the table incident and then the state field uh, that we wanted to uh, filter on. And then you also have um, optional exclusion and default values. So you can add any element that you want to exclude from the filter or a default value. Uh, the excluded values are included when you select all as the filter type. So unless you've already filtered your original report to exclude those records, they will show up uh, when the user selects all. And then the default value is automatically applied for all users. However, if a user selects a different value, that value is actually saved and, and overrides that global default until they go in and clear the filter themselves. So that's how the previous filter is displayed on a dashboard. So you have the default value is new, and then the records below are showed only the ones in the new state. Um, in order for a report to be filtered on the fil uh, interactive filter, um, the widget needs to have the follow interactive filter selected for it to apply. Uh, you can also make reports act as filters themselves. So certain reports and breakdowns can act as interactive filters for other reports. Um, so for example, a pie, a pie chart, um, when you click on a subset of data in that report, all other reports with the same table get filtered with that subset of data. And uh, I'll show you that when we get into the instance. And for a report to act as an interactive filter, you have to select act as an interactive filter on that report widget. So custom filters are a fallback to use when standard filters don't provide you certain functionality. You can create scripted filters to provide advanced filtering options and then you control all aspects of that filter interface and filtering logic. Uh, custom filters are scripted widgets or dynamic content blocks that use the dashboard message handler class 
to define and publish report filters. So this is uh, the dashboard message handler class. Uh, you can instantiate the dashboard message handler with a unique value, and then you can pass the table name and the query as parameters in the method. And then you also have remove filter, which would remove the filter, uh, the query from that particular filter. Uh, for debugging, you have a debug filter, which displays a JSON array of all the active filters on your dashboard. So for this example, you can see the two active filters on the dashboard. So you have one showing priority and another showing you can uh, two buttons with either all tasks or only mine. And in the debug, you can see the ID table and filter for each one. Uh, so there are a bunch of limitations listed in the ServiceNow documentation. Uh, you can't select a default value um, like you can for the standard out of box ones. Um, when you refresh a widget, the filter value doesn't persist. And then also when you select reset filter from the context menu, um, it doesn't reset custom filters. So your filters will still apply. Uh, custom filter values don't persist across tabs. So if your dashboard has multiple tabs, um, it'll only work on that single tab. Uh, and if there's more than one instance of that same filter on your page, you could have uh, some unexpected behavior. You can also, if you delete the filter, the dashboard will then continue to follow that filter until you leave or refresh that page. Uh, you can only select one table at a time to, for the filter. Um, when exporting data to a PDF, some of the content may appear blank or not respect the filter. I haven't seen this, but it is listed in the do uh, documentation as a limitation. Um, a big limitation to remember is filters do not apply to lazy loaded dashboard widgets. So filters only apply to widgets that are loaded on the screen. So if you have longer dashboards, uh, they may not be filtered until the user scrolls down and actually loads them and then apply the filter. And then custom uh, filters are not used in uh, breakdown dashboards. Mm -hmm.